You've got mail. Hi. I wanted to share some threads I saw on Twitter that caught my attention. They were about some TikTok guy named Kevin Leonardo. He posts kind of controversial educational content. It seems to get debated a lot. I'm confident all of you know this, but YouTube actually allows some very interesting content under its education policy. It's at 27 million views. Sorry for what I'm about to talk about. This, this is bad. A few weeks ago, I uploaded a video. In that video, I did what I said I would do in my title. The reaction was absolutely insane. Apparently, he has some stuff that's more shock value than education, like it's used to catch people's attention rather than actually teaching you something. Little girls genuinely excite me so much. I'm really into colonization. Like, I almost wish I was there when my home country was being colonized. I love to my cat while I'm slowly him in bed. Looking into it more, I am generally a bit concerned about his Discord server, though. There's, like, people having weird conversations with minors. Kevin was made aware, but he kind of brushed it off. I think it's funny, and I think it makes me feel, like, really important that, like, someone's, like, out there tweeting my name. I don't know. The whole thing seemed kind of strange. I was wondering if you'd take a look. Thanks. Goodbye. If you're like me and billions of others, you most likely by now have heard of a little app known as TikTok. But if you happen to be one of the remaining people who are unfamiliar with its existence, it's not an issue by any means. Allow me to explain. Riddled with a never-ending library of colorful content such as, for example, funny animals, relatable posts, cooking, so on and so forth, provided directly to users' feeds by its vast array of creators, TikTok is such a place where one could accidentally scroll for hours if they forgot to moderate themselves carefully. However, as many of you may be aware, a TikTok is far from a simple app that comes without fault. From the very creators you yourself may have seen in passing, the website has seen its fair share of bad actors who plague the website with endless controversies. From a constant influx of users who prey upon vulnerable groups of people for their own selfish reasons, scam others for sympathy, or are just blatantly creepy in their behaviors and actions, the directory of infamous figures on TikTok is a continuous problem that only seems to keep growing. And with our character of interest today, we'll find yet another footnote of one of TikTok's many controversies. Meet Kevin Leonardo, known by his TikTok user handle, The Coolest Kev. Located on both his TikTok account as well as his channel by the same name, one can find Kevin frequently uploading educational videos regarding personal topics that some may find themselves too uncomfortable to ask the adults in their life, such as their parents, hygiene, self-care, story times, etc. Alongside this, however, is Ragebait, as well as directly suggestive content with the sole purpose of, what I would argue, is shock value, and to get a rise out of unsuspecting users with his, in my personal opinion, lackluster humor that falls is both insensitive and rather uncomfortable, which one could argue is the intended purpose of his humor. And I won't simply be focusing on what some may deem as dark humor. Rather, I have some discussions set in place for some particular instances where the comedy's objective clause becomes a bit questionable. But this is simply the tip of the iceberg. From an unsafe discord of Kevin's for his community featuring inappropriate channels where minors and adults could converse back and forth unchecked on not safe for work topics in non educational ways, which is what Kevin claims to be his defense regarding these matters, Kevin's either direct or indirect disregard for the safety of minors in said discord, which with said messages of his own uncovered in his server, raises some serious questions as to how much he can play into the plausible deniability. Shane Dawson levels of comedy regarding his cat, highly insensitive story time videos which I'm itching to rip apart, as well as three documented Twitter threads regarding the environment of the prior mentioned discord server, is rather dismissive of responses to such threads, one response in particular being disturbing in its given context, the contents of his rage bait content, a bizarre roleplay, and so much more that I can't simply squeeze all this into a basic summary. The story of Kevin Leonardo is one that leaves me disappointed in the behavior that's allowed to go unchecked from a creator that seems to believe they can do no wrong under the guise of being an educational channel with a twist of added humor. I will be 100% honest in saying that I believe my video here today will result in some backlash on my end. And I I'm more than open to hearing different opinions and takes as long as they are provided down below in a respectful manner. I understand that this creator is beloved by quite a sizable fan base. I intend to not throw blind hatred, rather I wish to share my viewpoints and arguments on a situation that
that was brought to my attention, yet found hardly anyone discussing. But before we hop in, if you'd allow me to introduce myself for a few seconds, it would mean a lot to me. Hi there, I'm Wonder, your one-stop shop for calm deep dives on some of the internet's most unsavory individuals around, and my god, there are quite a lot of them. I upload a new deep dive on a bi-weekly to tri-weekly basis, depending on how in-depth they are, so if you find you enjoy today's video, feel free to drop a like and subscribe down below with the bell notification on so you never miss out on yours truly as well as the unfortunate people who we have to discuss on this channel. Also feel free to let me know in the comments what you did or didn't like about today's video so I can work harder in the future to making this a better viewing experience for you. I'd also like to quickly give thanks to the individuals on screen for shedding light on this situation, providing me with the proper directions needed for bringing this situation together cohesively. I will also state that throughout this video there will be trigger warnings placed for individuals who may need them due to some of the topics being discussed. This is not the only time these warnings will be placed, and they will oftentimes be more descriptive depending on where they are accurately being placed throughout the video. Without further ado, I appreciate you for letting me get that out of the way. Now, let's get right into the story of Kevin Leonardo, TikTok's most controversial creator. The reaction was absolutely insane. Like I could never have imagined a video of mine going this viral. I saw the funniest reactions on TikTok. I got supportive DMs and comments of people like thanking me for making such like a helpful video. And like, I feel like such a cool person. Wasting no time, I want to present this chapter as direct and concise as possible. So let's do just that. Kevin Leonardo first appeared on TikTok on January 30th, 2020, where he uploaded his first video involving a harmless photo reel celebrating his mother's birthday. Nothing out of the ordinary by any means. Uploading frequently roughly throughout 2020 through the later stages of 2021, Kevin could be found telling rather straightforward stories about his life and answering questions pertaining to being a member of the LGBTQ plus community. Over time becoming a rather well-known figure on TikTok, he was sought out by other users of the same community, as his stories acted as a voice for those seeking understanding, relatability, as well as a sense of belonging. which is highly important in this day and age for a very real and sizable demographic of people. I've tried to sift through the mountains of content that can be found on Kevin's TikTok, but for the most part, as far as I can tell, these earlier uploads failed to stand out as anything but ordinary. Nothing in particular to raise one's eyebrow at. Somewhere within the time frame of 2020 through 2022, Kevin's content began to take a turn into more of a raunchy direction, adding the occasional shock value lines or humor to really grab the attention of an audience and to keep viewers watching. Little girls genuinely excite me so much. I love to make out with my cat. Launching his channel, The Coolest Kev, on September 6, 2021, Kevin began to upload, much like his concurrent activity on his TikTok page, life stories regarding childhood struggles and tutorials that, to the passive user, could be found with titles that one may find unusual given the typical nature of content on the platform. At this point in his career, Kevin was still developing quite a sizable following for himself. Himself. However, in terms of public identity, was still flying relatively undetected within his own niche. It wouldn't be long, though, before Kevin found his most well-known claim to fame across numerous platforms, making him an overnight sensation that would result in many heated arguments and debates as to what limits should be allowed to be pushed online. On June 25th, 2023, Kevin would upload to his YouTube channel a video titled Removing a... <laughs> Removing butt hairs using nair cream, a visual guide. In what is praised to be within the comments and across forums such as Reddit, a straightforward and informative video, Kevin does exactly as the title describes. Using a visual guide, himself, Kevin within just a few brief moments of this tutorial, has a direct shot of his derriere placed in front of the camera, to which he, as stated, removes hair using nair cream. It's pretty self-explanatory. Many users were quick to debate if this type of content should be allowed online, given that the platform has had strict policies against this type of content, so some argue that it violates community guidelines. Another argument that some users presented was that children could inadvertently stumble across this video and therefore be directly exposed to Kevin. Some even went as far as to start their own petition to have the video removed for good. 
However, a louder majority of users countered that Kevin, despite what may seem shocking at first, had actually not broken any community guidelines and was well within his right to present this as educational content, noting that the video itself is also age-restricted. After Kevin's upload had time to circulate across the web, resulting in challenge videos where people would show their unsuspecting friends the contents of his clip for their reaction, creators filming their own reactions, as well as being discussed by the likes of notable internet personalities such as Most Critical, an overall consensus had been reached in regards to Kevin's controversial video. It was found that, as mentioned, Kevin's video was deemed to be directly informative and educational, and since there was no removal of the content, that no community guideline violations had had taken place. Many users brought up that this type of content is actually needed, and I've actually reached out to a few people to get their thoughts and opinions on this type of video, and a lot of people have come back and said that this is heavily needed amongst community members such as the LGBT community who don't have a safe place to seek out this type of educational content, and that what Kevin was doing was generally beneficial. It, th there's no smoke and mirrors, there's no censorship here. Within the first four seconds, it's the whole chocolate factory on display. After a few months had past, criticism towards Kevin had become drowned out by the newfound influx of followers that were now becoming avid watchers of both his channel and TikTok page. To put this influx into perspective, his channel alone rested at a humble 12,000 subscribers at the time of his Nair video seven months ago. Currently, he rests comfortably at a whopping 368,000 at the time of this recording. With more reasons than ever to push the limits, Kevin's full-fledged descent into raunchy eye-catching content that was in reality a gateway to discussions of storytelling and tutorials had finally begun. And the more Kevin posted, the more his followers loved him. One look into Kevin's TikTok page and you'll find numerous comments expressing how his sense of humor and his style of explicit comedy is what adds to him being as what is often described as a out-of-pocket character. If users find his type of humor to be off-putting or distasteful, and they attempt to critique as such, said users are oftentimes remarked as sensitive and unable to take a joke. Any angle of criticism towards Kevin is usually met with an explanation that viewers of his find reasonable enough. As it would seem, based upon our overall synopsis of him, Kevin appears to be, on the surface, a merely misunderstood creator, with a desire to educate his community on topics that may be uncomfortable to discuss anywhere else. However, as you're expecting, in an effort to paint you a picture regarding the origins of Kevin and his online career, I left out some rather obscure blotches that those who view his wide collection of content in passing may not recognize as questionable. Let's waste no time in diving into our second chapter, as we backtrack and take a closer look at his proclaimed educational content, dissecting a series of clips that I am eager to understand as to how such content falls under the guise of informative. With an open mind, Let's begin. When I was a kid, I froze butterflies and I kicked cats into sewers. What the hell is wrong with you? Trigger warnings, DV, SA, CSA, racially insensitive content. As a reminder, due to the current online landscape, I have to censor certain controversial names, words, language, etc. There will be on-screen words that assist in understanding what is being said. For example, that fat dog ate all my goldfish will look like this. As for some words, they may not seem as if censoring is needed. However, given how words and videos appear to be scanned, it could cause potential for interference. Believe me, I share the same frustration as the creator as one does as the viewer. Thank you for understanding and let's proceed. On June 6, 2023, Kevin Leonardo uploaded a clip to TikTok simply titled, I haven't been back to Indonesia. Keep in mind that this video could be directly recommended to anyone. Kevin, using what he states is often his sense of humor, describes, for lack of better terms, his very particular desires regarding a very real tragedy that befell the Indonesian people. I must admit, aside from the slight historical factor of this clip, I struggle to find the punchline or the educational value that the this clip provides. I'm really into colonization. Like, I almost wish I was there when my home country was being colonized by, I think, the Dutch. I feel like it would have been so fun to observe, like, the manly pirates. Not, like, for real, for real, obviously. I just mean, like, in a fun, like, like, way, you know? So when people ask me, like, Kevin, what do you like? Like, what are you into? Just know that, like, the core of everything that I'm attracted to is a dominant 
masculine man. He doesn't have to be like super macho manly, but just like at least more than me. What about you guys? What kind of guys do you like? Let me know in the comments. Okay, let's try to wrap our heads around this for a moment, if you will. Heaven states he's into colonization and how he wishes he was present when the Dutch committed horrific crimes against the people of Indonesia, which is quite a statement to make. It's quite literally a tragedy that numerous cultures have suffered through. He then praises the Dutch pirates as if they were some form of giga-chad hunks out of a movie, which I'd argue is rather detached from the reality of the circumstances that took place. Also, it's just weird to glorify actual pillagers. I don't know why that has to be explained, but here we are. He does clarify, he doesn't really mean he wishes this fantasy could take place exactly as it happened, rather in a, um, in a fun way. Not like for real, for real, obviously. I just mean like in a fun, like, way, you know? You know, the fun kind of colonization whatever that looks like. He ultimately wraps us all up and clarifies that what he's really trying to get at is the fact that he enjoys a more dominant figure in his life, and that by bringing up the concept of a real-world issue, he's able to make a relation as to how this ties in with his dating preferences. So, as we'll see, Kevin is using what is his standard MO of shock value as a means to later transition to the actual intention of his video, which here is simply to discuss dating preferences off the back of a very horrible tragedy that happened to real human beings. Users can be found in the top comments of this clip joking that, hey, secrets are cool and that diaries are still relevant. Other users who can be found duetting this particular clip of Kevin's, critiquing its contents, can be found with comments on their own video stating that the individual simply can't take a joke. One user in particular who found this clip to be distasteful was a TikTok creator known as Etch-a-Sketch, who sums this up better than I could. Let's take a look. I'm really into colonization. What? <laughs> you must have accidentally used the wrong word accidentally. Like, I almost wish I was there when my home country was being colonized by, I think, the Dutch. So you can, like, help them, right? Right? I feel like it would have been so fun to observe, like, the manly pirates. W watch them do what? Wait, wait, this can't be for real. Not, like, for real, for real, obviously. Oh, whew. I just mean, like, in a fun, like like way you know wait there's no way you just said that watching indonesian people which is where you are from by the way that watching them get and then put into slavery is fun and oh wait there has to be a point to this right like this must be satire so when people ask me like kevin what do you like like what are you into just know that like the core of everything that I'm attracted to is a dominant masculine man. You really just glorified colonization slavery as an intro to talk about your preferences? I mean, speaking of preferences, remember this video? Oh, you deleted it. Oh no, we'll never know what was said in the video. <laughs> Just kidding, I have clips. He said stuff like this. If I fulfill a white man's fantasy of like colonizing my country and like having me be this like super Asian person, which I am, the white man also fulfills my fantasy of like dating a super hot manly dude that I see in movies and TV. I honestly don't understand why he has a platform. He says problematic things all the time and not even just about race. And I get it. I understand that he just wants- It's cool, you know, like I love attention. I love going viral and I love like money. Like I will always only post educational videos. But for f sake, educate yourself before you go try to educate other people and say ignorant sh after watching both Kevin and etch a clip, I asked for you to formulate your own thoughts and opinions in regards to these two videos, as your opinions and views may lie differently than mine. Moving on to our next clip, we find a video involving Kevin and a certain interest of his regarding roleplay. I will state a trigger warning for CSA regarding the following clips. Yet again, we will be seeing Kevin using a real-world tragedy that affected real human lives as a means to segue into more personal and deep discussions. As the name actually has to be censored, yes, this actually has to be censored, I will clarify that this specific fantasy of Kevin's is surrounding this man and his island. We will be watching the controversial clip first, followed by a brief snippet of a video uploaded by Kevin to his channel, explaining his intentions behind said controversial clip. Let's begin that now. He was on for a long time with the idea of going to 
island. Obviously not realistically, but like in a imaginary like role-playing scenario with someone that I love and trust. I used to be on by the idea of going to Thailand and having like him at but like in reality, it's the guy that I'm seeing. Tell me to give him a massage and have me be a younger person and like get like, I've always dreamt of that. Like, it's just a thing that kind of like gave me an idea when I was watching his documentary. Like, oh, I would love to go to an, like a rich person's island and then like be forced to have them. Like, who wouldn't want that? I mentioned this because that was a documentary that I watched in 2019. And I told him like the day after, like, hey, can we do a role play with this? And he agreed with no hesitation. And he, you know, pretended to be Mr. And I'd be like a 17 year old boy um, from Thailand or something. And you know, we would do the whole thing. Like, What I find distasteful about this clip is how he states how he'd want to visit the island as a victim. He does clarify not as a predator and not realistically, but how the idea of being quote, a young person, which in this context would be a minor. Have me be a younger person and I'd be like a 17 year old boy. And being taken advantage of by wealthy individuals would be ideal. Following this, he rhetorically asks, who wouldn't want this? Like, who wouldn't want that? Hold on to this line, as it'll be important for a point I'm trying to address. I argue that publicizing this, even if it generally is one's own self-desire, is highly insensitive to a real-life situation that not only took place for the real victims of that notorious place, but for numerous others in everyday reality. Kevin does have a side of his story to share regarding this clip, but aside from that, I can't begin to understand what is educational about sharing this information. What is the intended purpose of trivializing real world tragedies. I can't argue there really is one aside from initiating those initial few seconds to really hook viewers. Perhaps I'm being too black and white with things, but I still want to continue forward with this question. But I digress. Let's watch Kevin's response towards the controversy surrounding this clip and hear its explanation behind its meaning. If you are familiar with my online lore, you've probably heard about me role-playing on Island, specifically a masseuse. This is not satire. This is not a joke. And I want to take the time today to share with you why I did that and why I posted it on the internet. We have to start, of course, in 2005 or 2006, one of those years, in Jakarta, Indonesia. The year that my friend slash neighbor, who was about my age at the time, six, seven years old, pressured me into a and the same year that I got by a crusty who was my other friend's uncle. The reason why I bring up these two situations with men when I was six years old in Indonesia is because I want to point out the fact that I was naive and young and very much powerless. Neither of these situations with my friend or with the crusty was in my control or was it ever my idea? I was six years old, what was I supposed to say? It was wrong and I don't condone it. I wanna reiterate the fact that it was never my idea or my intent to partake in these situations and I was very much a powerless victim. Now obviously this manifested in many different ways in my life when I was growing up and a lot of victims of actually feel very similarly to me. I'm not sure what this is called exactly, but I don't think that like we should be shamed for that at all since we're literally not hurting anybody and we're doing this in like a private consensual setting. Personally, I think it's a healthy thing. So when my partner asked me one day like, hey Kevin, like what do you want to try tonight? I said, well, you know, I saw the documentary last night. Can we do a role play? Like, can you play and can I play one of his victims? His victims were mostly girls, if not all. So I was like, well, why don't I just be, you know, a younger boy? I mean, I'm already a younger boy than the man in question. So for a few nights, he took on the role of and I took on the role of a younger Thailand masseuse that got asked to go to the island and give the boss a massage. Before I say anything, I do want to recognize the very real tragedy that Kevin has faced in his life, which is being a victim of CSA. 
I don't want to take away or criticize something that numerous people have to go through. With the intention of keeping an open mind and hearing Kevin's reasoning behind this clip, I can say that I understand that individuals who have faced such actions in their life will indeed process things in a different way, and the comments down below also share this same sentiment. And yes, certain criteria of roleplay can often be used as a coping mechanism. I don't by any means wish to diminish that. One may argue once again that this, yes, is a personal idea of Kevin's. And that is an argument I won't deny one is allowed to have, but the issue lies in the fact that the island scandal affected real lives and real children. I must reiterate that this, through my eyes, is trivializing real victims. Kevin himself was able to explain the intent behind the initial clip and clarify that this purpose was to speak upon a traumatic issue he faced in his own life. I posed the question though, what prevented him from doing this in the first place, without the use of real victims as a transition into a more digestible story? I would argue nothing. As much as I would favor a further discussion, we have a few more clips to get through involving his humor and around his cat Tobias. It's a running joke on Kevin's TikTok page that he's in a non-intimate relationship with his cat. Though as we will see in a response Kevin made to a Twitter thread regarding his behavior, one we will discuss shortly, Kevin makes a claim that he has never joked about doing anything inappropriate with his cat. I've never joked about a my cat. I actually love Tobias so much. Like, I've invested so much money and so much love into this cat. I love to make out with my cat while I'm slowly touching and caressing him in bed. I've never joked about a my cat. One could argue by the tiniest technicality of diction that this would be the case. But I'll leave that for you to decide. Now, I'm gonna play a series of compiled clips together rather than dissecting them one at a time after which we will briefly discuss the contents before discussing one particular clip that I feel is in dire need of further scrutiny. Let's begin. I c to my cat once a day outside because I feel like it's good for me to be stimulated in his environment. Now, my cat Tobias c to me at night because he loves to be touched and caressed in bed right next to me before and after I with myself. I don't c to my cat outside all the time because I feel like it's kind of annoying to get to his catio. This is the door to get inside his catio and as you can see it's a little bit like jammed and like low-key sticky. But while we're here let me give you a tour of Tobias's room. This is Tobias's catio that I try to c in once a day at the very least. He does love the sunlight. We have a lot of these cat trees and cat houses. I love to make out with my cat while I'm slowly touching and caressing him in bed before and after I myself in front of him. Here's me last night kissing my sweet, sweet paw. Genuinely, I've never felt so close emotionally and physically to anyone in my life. Like me and Tobias are basically like dating and like in on way, of course. Both of us love physical touch. Like if Tobias took like a love language test, physical touch would be like up there for him and for me too. Hug cat is one sure way to get him to fall asleep. Tobias absolutely loves to be touched and caressed and just coaxed to bed. Technically, he loves my fingers all day, every single day, 24 seven, but like, especially at night. Here's me my boy. I took this photo last night. Technically, the phrase is like, I'm um, my body so that like it curves. As you can see, Tobias loves my cross region. That's how he like relaxes. That's how he falls asleep. And so like, if you just sit down on the floor, like cross-legged, he will like come up to you and just like fall asleep on your lap. I could just see here the next day, these things take a little while to film. As we can see, Kevin is enacting his usual MO of raunchy comedy and dialogue, as well as shock value as a means to pull viewers in and keep them watching. This is clear. In the first clip, he speaks inappropriately about his cat and uses a very explicit choice of words that have a double meaning so he can simply show off his cat's room. In the second clip, he talks about how he makes out with his cat, which I don't understand the double meaning of the word there. In the third clip, he discusses how to perform a certain action, which is oftentimes associated with a word that has inappropriate connotations, and how that word is the best way to get his cat to fall asleep at night, emphasizing how his cat just loves to rest around his lower area. In reality, Kevin's just saying how he curls around his cat to get him to fall asleep. 
After sharing these clips, one can surely argue that this is just a joke. And though I don't personally find it funny, I don't believe that Kevin is doing anything nefarious to his cat. But the counter argument to be made is just because something is intended to be a joke doesn't mean that it doesn't just result in being blatantly weird and borderline disturbing. Perhaps others may not agree and might find that I'm scrutinizing a little too harshly here. And that's entirely fine as those people are entitled to their own opinion. If you find that perhaps you're still on the fence regarding your opinion, I'd like to share with you one final clip regarding his cat, Tobias. When I first looked around Kevin's TikTok page in hopes of better understanding who I was reading into, I noticed a clip titled, Officially a Domestic Survivor, followed by the hashtag Domestic Survivor. Keeping an open mind, I watched the entirety, wondering if this involved a real-world story Kevin had been through. However, um, let's just take a look. Guess who's officially a victim of domestic and domestic me he he look at my nose so this morning my boyfriend and i were obviously each other and correcting each other as we do as we all do and things got a little bit too passionate i might have said something a little bit too arousing. he might have gotten too excited and he swiped at my face his nails hadn't been cut in months and so his nails were obviously very sharp and i genuinely thought he was going to hit my eyes and so i closed my eyes in that split second, I was like this. And next thing I knew, when I opened my eyes, my nose was bleeding. And so I put on a band-aid and then I talked to my boyfriend and I was like, hey, like, what's going on? Like, this can't happen again. And he honestly did not say much, but I forgive him nonetheless. I won't forget this, but I am a very forgiving person. And so like, I will forgive. And I will try to forget, but I probably won't forget because it literally hurts. And now I have a stupid, ugly scar on my nose. I've never been scratched in the face before. Usually my cat scratches like my hands or like my body, but like this morning he was on the floor. Completely my fault. I do not blame him at all. <laughs> He's just so cute and so silly. Like even if this was his fault, I wouldn't be upset. So I will forgive him, but I will not forget this moment because it's kind of funny that Tobias just swiped my face. Has your cat ever scratched your face? Let me know in the comments. Guess who's officially a victim? Cause it's kind of funny. Ah uh, yes, I should have known. This is simply revealed to be a skit about how his cat Tobias scratched his nose. How educational, Kevin, how hilarious. I don't know what I was expecting when I, when I saw that title and then I watched the video and I was like, okay, perhaps, you know, this is a real genuine story. Nope, it's, it's SNL, baby. It's the most lackluster joke known to man. It's like, wow, that's, it's so, so funny. What makes this clip worse, in my opinion, are the comments. When the occasional user states how DV isn't something to joke about, Kevin responds by doubling down on said joke by stating that there isn't one to begin with. And he's defended for this. Apparently, this is simply a laughing matter, and those who find issue with a very real-world, everyday problem being the butt of a poorly delivered punchline that is circulating within the literal hashtag of DV survivors, a hashtag I'd imagine is used for those who wish to seek out stories of survival that they themselves can relate with, those people are deemed too sensitive. You're the problem. There are numerous users and creators online who get so-called cancelled for less. Yet this blatant jab at DV is accepted. I'd argue solely due to the fact that Kevin is deemed to be a out-of-pocket guy. Ah, oh, I almost forgot that he also brings up again that his cat is his boyfriend. So to firmly stand behind the argument that his humor never involves essaying his cat, I'd argue that's a pretty weak stance. In my opinion, and this is just my opinion, Kevin is faming ignorance for the sole purpose of maintaining his character and viewership. And if that requires real issues to be brought into the fold for his comedy sketches, or for a way for him to transition into his story time clips, with oftentimes no real intention for discussion aside from the initial shock value, then so be it, I guess. It doesn't mean I have to like it, but it absolutely means I have a right to critique it. All of what you have watched up to this point can be argued as a matter of perspective and opinion. I want to state that the following sections and chapters will pertain to more definitive examples of Kevin's inexcusable behavior. This next clip of Kevin's takes all of the elements you'd find in the ones we just watched. Shock value, eye-catching title, and using yet again real-world issues as a means for transitional storytelling. This one clip in particular, however, is where I firmly draw the line. On January 29th, 2024, Kevin uploaded to his channel a video titled, Little Girls Make Me So Happy. 
Yeah, <laughs> you're viewing it all wrong. That's simply a double meaning of the word. Because of, of course it is. Before I say anything, I want you to watch some of this video. And then I want to see if what I discuss afterwards lines up from what you took away from this. Little girls genuinely excite me so much. And I can't tell you like how happy that I get when I see and meet little girls in public. So yesterday I got to meet so many of my younger female fans at the ice skating rink in Pasadena. <laughs> Genuinely, like whenever I see groups of little girls like come up to me, I have this feeling in my heart. Like it makes me like can't wait to have daughters. It's like a surreal feeling. Cause like, I guess I grew up always thinking that I wouldn't like ever be good enough for the world or for like my family or for like my partner or whatever. I've always had this insecurity of like not feeling good enough. It literally changes my life and the way that I see myself. So like, I genuinely want to thank anyone that like said hi to me. It's very validating for me. It means that I'm doing something right with my content and just like in general. I went skating with my non-biological sister, right? And this literal eight-year-old girl, like this short, pops up out of nowhere, like this pro skater. And we were both singing Karma by Taylor Swift. She decides to linger with me and my sister and she, just gave us free skating lessons. That like warmed my heart so much. And I wanted to meet her parents, but I didn't get to meet her parents. I didn't get to meet her parents. But everyone else that like went there, it was like a poppin' day apparently, cause so many of my followers or like people that knew me were there. And I just felt so special and so like loved. And Ugh. Let's point out everything wrong with this if it wasn't already obvious. It is disgusting, in my opinion, that Kevin is using a pal joke as an introductory to speak as to how much he loves having an audience that looks up to him, and how some of those who look up to him are children. For obvious reasons, I kept the image blurred throughout the clip, but Kevin talks about how he met a little girl who taught him to ice skate, and he is grateful for this experience keeping the photo of said child uncensored in this video. He's using a real world issue, that being predatory behavior, as the shock value introduction into a video that has an image of a real child that he met and discusses how grateful he is to have fans, including young ones. I really do wonder if the mother of this child knew that their daughter would be featured in a video that starts off with a joke about predatory behavior. <clears throat> editor's note. Well, hello, it's me, Mr. Immersion Breaker here. I needed to add a quick editor's note, but I am neither home nor currently in possession of my camera, so if you'd allow me to briefly take over for Mr. Somebody Doesn't Double Check Their Suitcase, I'd be ever so thankful. There were a few more keynotes that I failed to discuss that really caught my eyes and ears with this clip. The first being that this clip not only contains an image of an uncensored minor, both in the video and on the thumbnail, that being the little girl Kevin met, more on that in a moment, but it contains a few compiled clips of numerous other minors that Kevin met who were revealed to be fans of his. Aside from their faces being left uncensored on a not safe for work creators channel, did Kevin get permission from these minors' parents to post their daughters online? I'd argue if not, then that's a pretty big no-no. Especially given Kevin's style of content and humor. It takes two clicks and voila, I can become more acquainted with Kevin, his body, and not safe for work sense of humor than I'd ever want to be in one lifetime. So yeah, that's a bit of a red flag in my book. It's pretty reckless. Which I find ironic because Kevin states in this video how he wants to be a father and have daughters, despite knowing that there are creepy people in this world who would want to harm them. It makes me like can't wait to to have daughters. Like I'll definitely be super anxious having a daughter because I know that there are so many like men that like would want to hurt them. Yet here he is providing their faces to the world for any stranger online to come across. That's arguably not very safe at all. What's frustrating here is that with context, the video itself has a sentimental value, but that sentiment is washed out by the albeit very quick shock value in comparison to his other videos, but shock value nonetheless, as well as the lack of censoring minors. And yes, I'd strongly argue that this is clearly intended as shock value due to the fact that almost all his uploads in his recent history have similar explicit titles. You can't convince me that when you have video tutorials such as how to f*** minors, a guitar tutorial, 
that you honestly don't know what you're doing. It's clear as day, in my eyes at least, that this is intended to be a predatory themed title where the contents of the video features his real life minor audience. A title that is paired with a thumbnail featuring a literal child who is left uncensored. Which brings me back to the most concerning part of this entire clip. When Kevin talks about the minor featured in his thumbnail, he talks about how this was not a fan of his and was just some random girl he met while ice skating. Actually yesterday there was like a special little girl that like absolutely just captured my heart. This girl didn't know me before, like from social media. She was literally like nine years old or like eight. He talks about how great the experience was, so on and so forth. But what raised my eyebrow was when Kevin mentioned how he wanted to meet this girl's parents, but how he was unable to do so. And I wanted to meet her parents or like we mentioned like me meeting their parents because I was like, I wanted to tell them like, oh my gosh, your daughter is amazing. They're literally like these pro skaters. Like they're, they were so good, but I didn't get to meet her parents. Now, wait a second here. I don't mean this as an accusation. Rather, I ask this out of genuine curiosity and concern. If Kevin didn't meet this minor's parents, wouldn't that mean he used a photo of this real child on his thumbnail, paired her alongside, in my eyes, a predatory title on his Not Safe For Work channel, and did so without their permission? Yeah, that totally doesn't seem alarming or weird. I really hope that even if you disagree with me on the earlier clips we reviewed, that we can agree that this is just flat out reckless and, quite frankly, in my opinion, inappropriate behavior on behalf of Kevin. I, I just don't know, man. It just seems really screwed up to me. Once more, in my personal opinion, I find this video to not only be extremely distasteful, but truthfully, I find this to just be blatantly gross. You don't add any capacity need this type of humor when speaking about or towards young audience members, especially children. It's beyond uncalled for. And per the comment section, as you could expect when someone says how this theme is inappropriate, someone is quick to tell that user to both shut up and to do something with their life. Another comment sharing the same sentiment reads as, Kevin, you low-key fell off. I know for a fact you can make good videos without clickbaity public titles. To which Kevin responded in a manner similar to his DV video, stating, Wait, they do make me happy though. I'm confused. This title wasn't supposed to be clickbaity or weird. Kevin, as bluntly as I can put this, in my strongest opinion, you are full of sh- You are a victim of CSA. You are aware of the type of implications this humor entails. We know this because he made a direct reference to the JE Island, and he's also just a grown adult. Time after time, you are found to be making light of real world issues for the sake of growing your channel and attracting new viewers. The intention here, in my opinion, is clear. Posing ignorance in my eyes is inadvertently confirming you are well aware of exactly what you're doing. I feel like I'm explaining that grass is green here. As much as I want to talk upon my personal thoughts surrounding these clips, particularly the one featuring a real minor as that was just really disturbing, there is simply just too much information we still need to get through. So waste no time, let's dive right into the next half of this chapter and discuss the initial viral Twitter thread that pointed out Kevin's questionable track record in the first place, as well as Kevin's education discord, which is, in its current state, an unchecked server with mountains of inappropriate exchanges between both adults and minors, with an unsafe lack of moderation for the ever-growing list of minors present within the server. I think it's funny and I think it makes me feel like really important that like someone's like out there tweeting my name. When influencers need a break from like online hate, like I don't relate, like this makes me want to keep going. On August 24th, 2023. User at Minty Bad Word posted a thread to Twitter discussing Kevin Leonardo's Discord server and their experiences within. Minty spoke on how they had joined Kevin's Discord under the assumption it was an adult-only LGBTQ plus space for sharing and educating. They were quick to find that the server housed over 4,000 members and that the majority of these users were minors, noting in their thread, quote, This is concerning considering he literally has a fantasy about being an island victim. Minty published a series of screenshots taken from the server. Following in chronological order of the thread, we have an image showing some of Kevin's Discord channels. We also have an image regarding some of his rules. It's highly important to make note of Kevin's no point, not safe for work rule, his 13 plus rule, and his no inappropriately messaging Kevin rule. Minty goes on to state how they found that minors have free roaming access to not safe for work channels, and that said minors are having not safe for work discussions and quote, 
acting as if it's a hookup site. Here we have a user who, in their introductions, claims to be, quote, currently starting high school and that they're single as well as their DMs are open, so to hit them up. What follows is proof of a minor who was freely able to speak in the Not Safe for Work channel, leading credence to a lack of moderation. After their initial posting, Minty updated a few more inquiries to their thread regarding their findings by proving that Kevin was aware of their thread and that he appeared to be making light of the situation. This is backed by a screenshot from a server where Kevin is posting a photo of the thread stating, Guys, we're controversial. Typically, this isn't the response someone gives when someone accuses one of running an unsafe Discord with examples. Furthering their update, Minty pointed out that Kevin's mod, who we'll refer to as their username Meta, as it's already been published, is 14 years old and was, quote, handpicked by Kevin. If we look at Meta's description in the introduction channel, we will see Meta stating that they are 14, and that they once took Kevin's username for 16 hours, implying that Kevin and this moderator perhaps are close. And in a conversation between Meta and another user, we can see this user asking about becoming a moderator themselves, to which Meta responds that Kevin decides mods. They also go on to say that the other user most likely wouldn't be able to become a moderator as they have only been in the server for one day, have very little messages, and that Kevin's DMs are currently off. Further cementing Meta's confirmation of age is another on-screen conversation directly from the server between Meta and the same user. They state how they are in fact a minor, to which Meta replies by saying they are a minor as well. The same day, only a few hours after Minty's post, Kevin himself retweeted the original thread where he defends his server, citing the actions and behaviors Minty experienced were against the rules, reinforcing how he doesn't condone not safe for work behavior of any kind, and that the 18 plus server is solely for people over 18 plus who have genuine not safe for work questions, stating, as I interpreted, as confusion as to where responsibility lies on his part. A little over five months after this initial thread was posted by Minty, another user by the name of at Gothic Wario, or Cosmo, uploaded a thread of their own to Twitter, referencing their issues towards Kevin. Gothic tweets asking users to cancel Kevin, questioning as to why he has been allowed a platform, detailing how Kevin jokes about committing essay to his cat, further citing the majority of the clips we have already seen, and directs users' attention towards Kevin's video titled Little Girls Excite Me. Gothic says there is so much they find wrong with Kevin and that they are confused as to why no one is really discussing him. The same day, a little while later, Gothic posted a new thread, with the reason being, quote, redoing because I am getting more problematic information that needs to be brought to awareness. Gothic elaborates that they intend to be as organized as possible because of how much attention their initial posting garnered. They also express how they are over 18 years old and are still in high school, and that Kevin had made a response to their initial posting that, reasonably, made them uncomfortable. In Kevin's response, he states how, for lack of better terms, how the attention surrounding him and Gothic's post made him excited. I get really on and physically stimulated when people tweet about me, like regardless of the context. I think this might be like only child syndrome because I grew up like lacking attention. And so now I'm like the biggest, like, like I get on attention, like good and bad. I saw this tweet just now and I think I have like a illness because I actually like like this tweet. <laughs> I think it's funny and I think it makes me feel like really important that like someone's like out there tweeting my name. When influencers need a break from like online hate, like I don't relate, like this makes me want to keep going. <laughs> I also think it's absolutely hilarious that this person brought up like my cat and like my younger female fans to try to say that I'm like a bad person. I've never joked about my cat. I actually love Tobias so much. Like, I've invested so much money and so much love into this cat and, like, I really took him in post being, like, a stray on the street. I'm taking him to the hospital in, like, five hours to check for tapeworms. I do so much for this cat. Like, we have, like, a very special relationship. As for the little girls that excite me, like, I genuinely love my younger female fans that, like, talk to me in public. Like, they genuinely make me really happy. I don't get by cats or little girls like that's disgusting and that's sick and that is not who i am and i feel like that's like obviously common sense you know so yeah i just wanted to share that this tweet amongst other tweets get me really just like excited obviously i love positive attention the most so like thank you for giving me that to like my followers my fans and people that like like me like thank you so much but sometimes when i get hate can't lie 
I kind of like it. Have a blessed day to my fans and haters. I find it disturbing that Kevin had someone critique and point out what they found to be problematic content of his, and instead of having a constructive back and forth dialogue, he chose to express how excited he was from the user's thread. Like, like what? Can we just for like two seconds not make it so f weird? At the time, he didn't know that this was like a very young person in comparison to his age, but it's still like, why would you say that to begin with? Gothic continues their thread by stating their anger and then proceeds with a collection of images, clips, and statements made by Kevin. A screenshot of a comment exchange between Kevin and a follower of his where the user asks, did you your cat to bed, to which Kevin replies with, yes, the collection of strange clips we watched earlier involving his humor towards his cat. His two videos about his island roleplay are also present, both the controversial one as well as the explanation video where he talks about how we got the idea from watching the Netflix documentary about the island, which I know we've already moved past this discussion, but I guess this went over my head earlier. I find it arguably distasteful to such an extreme that one could watch a documentary about such a nightmarish scandal that affected actual children, and then what they take away from it is to trivialize the idea on TikTok. It's just a thing that kind of like gave me an idea when I was watching his documentary, like, oh, I would love to go to an, like a rich person's island and then like be forced to, like, who wouldn't want that? Probably every single child that was a victim there, Kevin, if I, if I honestly had to answer that question. Exactly six days after Gothic's thread, another user by the Twitter handle at Luxybugs posted a detailed thread of their own in response to the information they had read through from both Gothic and Minty's thread. I will state with full disclosure that this user at Luxybugs is actually my boyfriend. I understand how this can play into a bias and seem off-putting to be given information by someone I am in a relationship with. I can see how one may find that I could lean towards a certain lens in regards to the narrative of this story. Lux and I have had thorough conversations and have tried to bring this information as uniformly as possible without attempting to witch hunt. However, their findings are sincerely concerning in regards to online child safety. I do not say that lightly. I want to clarify that the online child safety remark is not an accusation towards Kevin being a predator. After reading through the initial threads, Lux grew interested and wanted to see for themselves if Kevin's server was actually as volatile as users made it out to be. Lux begins their thread by retweeting Minty's original thread, stating, quote, I saw this thread and decided to do a deeper look into it. The behavior that is taking place in Kevin Leonardo's The Coolest Cavs Discord is disgusting, and I'd like to share some of what I've been able to find. They proceed to explain how, as we all know by now, that Kevin's content is not safe for work, whether it be his educational videos or his sense of humor. Yet, they also point out how Kevin's Discord allows anyone as young as 13 to join, but has rules against not safe for work content in any of the channels. Not safe for work and explicit conversations are told to be sent in the 18 plus only chat. While yes, this is age restricted, there's nothing actually safeguarding this channel preventing minors from joining. All there is is a prompt saying, you must be 18 years or older to enter this channel, but all you have to do is just click, yeah, I'm 18, and you're allowed access. It's not exactly an airtight way to verify people's ages, especially if you're going to be running an educational server of this type. Lux follows this by making note of the concerning fact that there are no rules distinguishing minors from adults, and that the moderator Meta has access to the Not Safe for Work channel, which can be seen here in an image where Meta replies to a deleted message in the 18 plus channel. A reminder, once again, Meta has stated that they are 14 years old. Moving forward, Lux provides three additional screenshots. The first one is a conversation between a moderator and another discussing the idea of locking the Not Safe for Work channel behind an 18 plus role, to which the moderator replies, I mean, it's really just for questions that we shouldn't be asking in general. People below 18 can have questions. It's not like there's anything 18 plus sent in that channel. It's all info you can Google. While yes, it's true that questions can be Googled is, and I'm gonna sound pretty sarcastic here, a not safe for work Discord server moderated by a 14 year old where there are zero roles or safety features to differentiate minors from adults. Really the safest place to seek out that kind of information? I find the idea that someone who could be an adult hidden behind their username can unmonitored give their own advice regarding private matters to a minor to be a pretty alarming red flag. Kevin, from what I interpreted from his wording and responses, believes there is nothing wrong with having a channel to ask these kinds of questions, and makes mention of how people are bringing up these issues on Twitter. 
To his, I suppose, defense, Kevin says he hasn't been active on his Discord as much, so perhaps he hasn't seen these exact particular actions taking place. But that ignorance of the issue is weakened when it's been brought to his attention five months prior currently, that he has a 14-year-old moderator on his staff that's managing not safe for work images, posts, conversations, content, etc. And yet he still has this minor as what seems to be his lead mod on his server staff. Not only this, but Kevin also recognizes himself that a lot of his followers are minors. If you look on screen, here he is acknowledging this himself. He has had five months since the initial thread regarding his Discord server to not only make critical safety decisions, but to also remove a minor who has direct access to all the not safe for work content that can be found within the server. Yet, nothing has been done to ensure that what should be a safe and productive place for education, something I would argue Kevin would believe is very important to him, becomes as intended. If you're going to run this type of Discord, a education discord as the creator i feel rather i firmly believe you should have a heavy presence in maintaining its safety negligence is never an option when children are involved Lux goes on to say they have seen firsthand multiple minors in the 18 plus channels, as well as numerous not safe for work conversations taking place outside of the designated areas for such, stating that Kevin took part in a few of these exchanges. Attached are three screenshots that document such interactions. Here we have a user whose introduction states they are 13 and quote, a simp for Kevin. The next image is of this underage user asking explicit questions in the 18 plus chat, which, if I attempted to censor, it would sound like a brief moment of silence. So I'll leave these up on screen, and as mentioned, there will be a drive link of the uncensored screenshots down below. Next, we have two interactions between this miner and Kevin. The first being a message where the miner says, I want Kevin to rank me, like OMG and ch on it. To which Kevin, rather than discouraging this behavior, simply says, oh. Preceding this is yet another exchange between Kevin and this user that reads as the following. At Kevin Leonardo, Josh Hutcherson or Taylor Swift? To which Kevin replies, right now, Josh Hutcherson, it's 10.26 p.m. for me. The user responds to Kevin by simply saying, help, to which Kevin replies with a message that's incredibly inappropriate to send to a minor. I am Lucy Goosey, what about you? It's 7 a.m. for me. I want his d high key. I'm not sure if Kevin has checked this particular user's intro to see their exact age. Not that it really matters, because when you're having these types of conversations online, you should never assume. But when you allow your audience, who you yourself say contains a lot of minors to be in your server, you say that everything is okay because explicit conversations remain in the 18 plus chats, you actively have minors having explicit conversations in said 18 plus chats, you don't discourage said conversations in general chat where minors are apparently to be designated, and then you yourself hold a not safe for work conversation in the same general chat with a minor, I can't help but come to the conclusion that this is highly inappropriate and extremely negligent on Kevin's part. But it doesn't stop there. Not at all. What follows is another minor in the introduction channel who claims to be 13, the bare minimum age requirement for the server. This was posted on 8-24-23. This user could be found almost a month prior in the 18 plus not safe for work questions asking quote, is it okay to c The reason I point out the dates is that for a month, a 13 year old was able to have access to a not safe for work 18 plus chat, yet wasn't required to verify their age. Meaning, there would be no way of telling if this was an adult or a minor until they themselves voluntarily provided this information. This is a very bad mix for an endless amount of reasons. Here we have the reverse example of a user posting their age on August 6, 2023, yet months later can be found as recently as December 27th, 2023, asking questions in the 18 plus not safe for work questions channel. Here's a safe educational question of theirs. Where's the weirdest place you've ever played yourself? Right. Do I need to explain why it's beyond not okay that an adult can answer this question for a 16 year old and that we'd never know if one did anyways? This 16 year old states that their DMs are open. What happens when someone who is older and doesn't state their age now has direct access to an inappropriate conversation with a minor? The fact that these messages can be found as recent as December means that Kevin took little to no action since the original thread from Menti regarding his Discord 
to better implement the safety features and verify that what he is cultivating is a safe and educational environment for his community. I can't even begin to show you the examples of blatant racism that takes place within the server, but even blurred, you can make some inferences as to the context of these messages. Remember, this is strictly against the rules of Kevin's server. Speaking of rules, remember that no explicit content rule? And remember how the 18 plus not safe for work questions channel is meant to be for general health and educational related questions? Also, do you recall the amount of minors that were able to speak in these channels? In fact, one of their mods stating that minors would look these questions up on Google anyways? Well, you'd find it strange then that there are countless uncensored explicit images that can be found being posted in these chats. There's even a message with a user asking if any of the mods come into the channel because they love the explicit images they can freely see there. This is a channel miners can actively speak in. Here is a literal screenshot of someone posting in the 18 plus not safe for work chat saying quote, I am a minor. Children are undoubtedly being directly exposed to this. After Lux's follow-up thread was posted, which we will look at here in a moment, the Not Safe For Work channel was deleted roughly about an hour later. The mod meta, citing the reason for deletion, was that there was no purpose for it. That means, up until roughly a week ago, this was a known problem for months, and Kevin actively neglected this. Hell, I'd argue in ways of his own, partook in this. Here we have a message exchange between Kevin and his 14-year-old mod meta, where Kevin talks about how he is, quote, a about his new video coming out to which Meta responds that the video made them feel the same way. This wording, from what I can tell, is a running joke in Kevin's community. The same community, he says, is made up of a large following of minors. And here he is actively sharing this joke with a 14-year-old, which, I'd argue, breaks the barrier of being a not safe for work creator. The conversation continues with another age unknown user saying how the song made them feel damp, as well as another yeah, I'm not gonna read that. Another conversation with Meta, where Meta jokes that Kevin, by saying another user by the name of Gloof, wants him to do a tutorial on how to use an inappropriate device. Kevin does not discourage this conversation and instead humors Meta by saying he is unable to do this because he doesn't have the physical features required for this. Can we take a wild guess as to what this word might be? This conversation continues with a user telling Kevin he should use Meta for the tutorial instead, to which Meta replies with what? Kevin, despite being directly replied to by Gloof to his prior message, does nothing to discourage this. This isn't the only inappropriate exchange found between these three users either. There's another conversation that was found between these three users, where Gloof says that, quote, Meta is so hot, to which Kevin replies saying they love Meta. No regard for the unverified age of Gloof, who's calling his 14-year-old moderator this, but let's continue. Gloof is seen here responding to Kevin saying, Meta is my pookie. I hate to break it to you, Kevin. Kevin argues back, no, he's mine, to which Gloof once again jokes about fighting Kevin for Meta to be their pookie. Yeah, okay, anyways, there are two outcomes here when you summarize the exchange between these three users. Either Gloof is an adult and both they and Kevin are partaking in not safe for work exchanges and gross conversations with a minor, or Gloof is a minor and now Kevin is having the same conversation with two children. Both of these outcomes are not ideal to say the least. In fact, I think they're pretty f disgusting. A few days later, Lux updated the threat with even more information, screenshots, and evidence they found within Kevin's server. The intro to this thread reads as the following. Update. About an hour after I made this thread, the mod, 14 years old, removed the Not Safe For Work channel, and Kevin seems to have been made aware of the thread. Thankfully, with the deletion of the Not Safe For Work channel, kids are less likely to be exposed to that content. While it can't be confirmed, as mentioned, within one hour of Lux posting their thread, the Not Safe For Work channel was removed and Kevin shortly after posted this in his Discord. The way I do nothing, and this Discord server continues to be tweeted about negatively every few months. Y'all, I'm so sick of Twitter. 
Kevin, it's the very fact that you aren't doing anything that results in the server being talked about negatively online. This server has no safety features, no role separating adults from minors. Explicit images posted in channels deemed only for educational questions. Channels that minors actively talk in. Minors of your own community. Yes, it says 18 plus and you have to click confirm, but that clearly isn't preventing children from entering. Yet, there's no addressing these problems until months later and after three threads have been posted. There's still extreme racism littered without. Adults actively having not safe for work conversations with minors. Kevin himself has a conversation with someone who's hitting on his own 14-year-old moderator. And there's no role to confirm whether this was a minor or not. He's having a conversation about not safe for work devices and a user joking that he should use his 14-year-old mod for that tutorial. There's no discouragement. There's no safeguarding. So yes, Kevin, it is exactly that. You're doing nothing. Lux goes on to point out that there are still adults having not safe for work conversations with minors and uploads an example where, as you can see on screen, one user in the general chat, so already against Kevin's rules he claims to adamantly stand by, says they are in need of a specific type of partner, asking if there are any takers. What follows is another user who replies, me, 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 stating that they are, I'm gonna leave this up on screen for you to see, and are quote, a femboy. This user, according to their bio, is 16 going on 17. This is yet another unmoderated interaction between a user whose age is unknown and a minor taking place in the non-designated areas for even having such a conversation, where, to begin with, should only be happening between two adults. This is taking place one day after Lux's thread was posted. Kevin, at this point, now had three Twitter threads made about him and his Discord server. Two, which Kevin himself admits to being aware of, due to him directly responding to them. I saw this tweet just now. I think it's funny, and I think it makes me feel, like, really important. Lux finished their thread by stating that this server is not a safe environment for minors, and that while recently deleting the Not Safe for Work channel was a step in the right direction, more needs to be done when these conversations are happening in every corner of Kevin's Discord, stating that Kevin should have a strong incentive to protect members of his own community, citing Kevin's acknowledgement of his audience as being made up of a quantity of minors. With Lux's final thread coming to a close, they would post no further updates. However, the research and discovery of further issues found within Kevin's Discord server continued. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish we could say by this point of the video, we were done. And if you're still here, I applaud you for being quite the trooper and making it this far. But we still unfortunately have more to get through. So let's brush ourselves off, maybe pause, go grab some water, and let's waste no time. When entering the announcements channel, one could primarily find messages from the 14-year-old moderator Meta, as well as a few messages from Kevin thanking his mods or telling them that he loves them. The first message in this channel is dated 7-11-2023, with an announcement from Meta discussing the return of the server, as well as some heated choice of words towards one user only known as Float. It appears from further research that Float may have been a moderator within the server, yet there was a raid he was to blame for that apparently caused the server to go up in flames. This user Float also, according to Kevin, doxed Kevin via Twitter. As to the reasoning why, not that there is ever a good reason to dox someone, it's unclear. What's peculiar about this information is that in Kevin's server, there's a role users can obtain that commemorate those who were there on the day Kevin's server was raided. And the reason that boggles my head a little bit is because if we can get a role for something that niche, why isn't there a role to differentiate minors from adults? You're clearly making roles, yet that's just one you felt that might need to be left out. What also is just flat out not okay is that Meta, who is, as we've said, a minor, can be found in the announcements section going over a few things about the server. But what catches my eye is where Meta says, quote, if somebody sends anything not safe for work, or go send me a DM. This is a 14 year old that Kevin apparently handpicked that is confirmed to be moderating not safe for work content, which is, yet again, confirmation of a minor having direct access to not safe for work content. A user whom Kevin appears to be somewhat close with, as we can see they discuss playing Roblox together, and Kevin even asks them how school's going, which can be seen here. So if I had to strongly infer, Kevin is beyond well aware of the age of this user. Moving on, we have a message exchange posted in the suggestions channel between 
between three users. One user is asking for an explicit image from another user, while another asks a not safe for work question regarding the nature of the not safe for work picture. The user then replies, quote, you first. Neither of these users have a post in the introductions channel that would state their age, nor do their bios have a set age. There is no way of knowing if the participants of this conversation were minors, adults, or both. And the Deep Stuff channel, a channel seemingly made for venting, not safe for work conversations between unverified users can be found as recently as February 17th, at the time this video is being written. Once more, these images will be linked in a Google Drive down below, as some of these, even with censoring, I can't even attempt to repeat. Lux revisited the intros channel, and found a pinned message from Meta, asking users who choose to add an intro which would state their age, and might I remind you that this is not required by any user, to format their introductions in a certain way. With intros easy to read through due to their required format, Lux found that through a quick scroll, a large number of users appear to be minors. They also found that the last seven users alone were all users under the age of 17. And if we look at Kevin's other moderator, we find no age, only that they are quote, an unaging immortal being, which translates to, we can't confirm if this is another hand-picked minor who is moderating not safe for work content or not. Here we have someone telling another user saying, quote, I want you to send me a video of you it to Kevin Leonardo. A message from Kevin in general chat, which might I remind, is not an 18 plus channel. Guys, people keep to me and telling me in my DMs. A user can be seen here saying that Kevin liked their story and that it made them, for lack of better terms, excited. A user replying to this message says how Kevin VC'd with them, adding him directly saying, I love you Kevin, you're the best. The same user then asks Kevin how a hair removing treatment is going and if he'd recommend it. To which Kevin bluntly says using his resounding way of words, low key not really because my s smells right now. How educational, Kevin. This user, by the way, is a 15-year-old minor. I feel like this is the first genuine question I've seen from a user in this server. I'm sure there's some actually out there, but it's a very simple, Kevin, do you recommend this treatment? And then Kevin, who adamantly stands by his server being a safe place to ask these kinds of questions, replies with, with this. It's just like, Wow. Back in general chat, one user says that they believe the server should be 18 plus rather than 13 plus, to which two more users chime in, one saying that there would be less members if this happened, and the other that everyone by now has seen Kevin in an explicit manner in regards to his content, so it wouldn't matter at this point anyways. And if you keep your eyes on the screen, you'll see another not safe for work message in general from Kevin directly, where he says he believes he performs a certain action very well well. There are countless examples here. Countless minors being exposed to or discussing not safe for work content with little to no moderation at all. Numerous unverified users having inappropriate conversations. Subjects I can't even begin to discuss in this video because there's just no realistic way for me to do so. Kevin himself, being aware of the threads and admitting his knowledge of having a younger audience, still has done nothing for months to enforce safety between his community members. Instead, he cites how he's controversial and how much he loves attention. I think this might be like only child syndrome because I grew up like lacking attention. And so now I'm like the biggest, like, like I get off on attention, like good and bad. Because that's really what you do when you're made aware that there's some really bad stuff going on that should really be addressed. You talk about how excited it makes you, how you just love the limelight. You brag about it in the actual server where it's happening. Kevin's Discord, which was intended to be a server dedicated to the education around sensitive and oftentimes embarrassing topics for a very real and vulnerable community, is in my opinion an unacceptably neglected server that is an active danger to child safety every moment this type of behavior is allowed to continue. He actively allows a 14-year-old to moderate not safe for work content. A 14-year-old who requests that any not safe for work content posted within the Discord should be brought to their attention directly. A 14-year-old that Kevin has also partaken in not safe for work conversations with alongside another user whose age can't even be verified to begin with. And speaking of unverified ages, let's not forget we can't confirm his other moderator's age. So we're unsure if we have two instances of this occurring or not. Kevin has has had ample opportunity to discourage this type of behavior and bolster the moderation of his server for months. Yet he stands behind the defense that he does nothing, which is exactly right. Nothing is being done and that just cannot continue. 
Backlash or not, this issue needs to be brought to the attention of online users. This can't just continue to be dismissed as someone who's out of pocket or invulnerable to criticism. I understand that there are aspects of Kevin's content that help people. I've seen the comments and numerous people who do find a lot of his videos to be educational, leaving his fans oftentimes heard or understood. And the last thing I want to do is to diminish the fact that Kevin himself has had his own struggles. As a victim of CSA myself, I understand that it comes with its own unique battles, but I can't ignore the glaring red flags that others such as Minty, Gothic, or Lux, and more before me have taken notice of. Those flags being of negligence, the usage of real-world issues that affected real lives for shock value, predatory humor to transition into a story time that features an image of an actual minor, the ignorance to issues being presented in his server via Twitter, and how instead of understanding his influence as a creator who has a lot of young people including minors who look up to him, he decides to make light of it in his Discord and make a response saying, how much he loves the attention. The participation of not safe for work message exchanges with known minors and users who can't even be verified as adults or not. There is so much wrong going on here. And it's why I've tried my best to separate the educational content and the bad humor from the insensitive and genuinely concerning as well as disturbing issues that are taking place underneath all of this. Kevin has to take accountability eventually. He is allowed to make not safe for work content. He has that right. And you realistically can't control the age demographic of your entire audience. That's just a matter of fact of being a creator online. But the moment you recognize your presence as a not safe for work creator, you have to be extremely careful and ensure you're doing everything in your power to separate yourself from the minors of your audience. You shouldn't be having conversations about how parts of you are smelly to a 15 year old, or talking with unverified users in a discussion involving an inappropriate device tutorial with your 14 year old moderator. You shouldn't as a not safe for work creator open up a discord server with the intention of being educational, then neglect that intention and instead have a child be in charge of sifting through channels that are littered with disgusting images and conversations. Kevin, in my opinion, should delete the server. It's clear that this discord is a recipe for disaster, and already proves to hold unsafe conversations, which I'd heavily argue is a big problem for the safety of children online. It is, in my opinion, clear that Kevin has no intention of working to make this server a safe and secure place to have real and productive conversations regarding educational matters, despite him being made aware of these issues for months now. So, if that is the case, it would be best to delete the server in its entirety, since it appears to take such a backseat when what he's attempting to do requires an unfathomable amount of security and moderation. I want to clarify that this is not intended as an aimless attack. Rather, I want to present genuine criticism. I do not condone harassment, nor do I condone joining Kevin's server and harassing users or Kevin himself. I solely intend to bring awareness to an issue that I haven't seen many people talking about in the online space. With that said though, Let's move on. Smelling my friend's farts is also something that I love to do. Like, you'll never catch me going like, oh my god, you just farted, like, go away. Like, I will go to the location of the fart and literally go like, mm. because I think it's so fun and fresh. Currently, Kevin can be found actively posting to both his TikTok and channel his content per usual. As for his Discord, the server is still currently up and running to this day. And despite the 18 plus not safe for work channel being removed, there are still inappropriate interactions that can be found taking place within as well as many others that either couldn't be shared or would take far too long to dissect. I will also be leaving links to Minty, Gothic, and Lux's threads down below so you can read where a lot of this information was originally compiled that also features some discussions that can't be disclosed within this video. As for Kevin, do not go and seek him out or harass either him or his followers. There is nothing productive in doing so. Erring on the side of redundancy, I have stated that this video is not intended as a baseless witch hunt or a cancellation party. What I would like from this is productive conversations down below, and to raise awareness of a corner of the internet that is going unchecked, and the safety that's at risk to minors and part of that negligence. I feel I've already clarified my stances regarding this matter, as well as my thoughts surrounding Kevin, so I see no point in reiterating those sentiments. If I had to say anything though off script off the top of my head, it would just be the fact that it's extremely disappointing because Kevin has generally had very bad things happen to him. And I'm not saying he's a predator or anything like that, but he's incredibly insensitive to other people who are victims of CSA. And he uses shock value and inappropriate humor that just quite frankly, shouldn't be justified online. 
and he has such an opportunity to just not enact and not engage in that type of behavior and just solely be a good voice for the LGBTQ plus community. And instead, he chooses to be reckless and negligent. It's just disappointing if I really had to summarize it up. It's it's incredibly disappointing and extremely irresponsible for Kevin to behave this way. Despite the potential backlash of this video, I hope at least something useful can come of this information. Maybe nothing will come of it, but you know, at least it's out there now. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. That was a lot of heavy stuff, so let's kind of brighten up the outro a little bit. Put this guy here. Can we green screen him? Oh my god, look at that. If you're still watching up to this point, I want to first say, go outside, Jesus Christ, and uh, take a few moments to say thank you. It really does mean the world to me that you'd watch all the way through. I understand that this video was quite long, so you're a real trooper. If you liked today's video, feel free to drop a like and subscribe down below with a bell notification on so you never miss out on any future uploads. Also, feel free to leave a comment down below telling me what you did or didn't like about the video so i can work on making this a better viewing experience for you in the future also if you'd like to catch up and follow me after the video feel free to look at the social links that are on my face it's gonna be a little hard to miss them as they're just sitting right there okay <laughs> it's a really easy way to catch up on my personal life future uploads and more if you also like a way to support myself on this channel consider checking out my patreon down below it's always appreciated but never expected there will be a brief segment where i read the names of those kind individuals without further ado once more, my name's Wonder, and it was phenomenal to have you here today. I'm looking forward to seeing you around in the next one. Truthfully, with this video taking so long, I've really missed you guys. So until then, stay safe, do something nice for yourself, and farewell. Take care. If you're still here, I'd like to take a moment to express my gratitude to my kind-hearted supporters over on Patreon. Perhaps you're one of them. I truly am forever grateful for your generosity. I know times are rather tough for a lot of people right now, so for you to support me in such a way with everything going on in the lives of your own, I really can't find proper words other than thank you. I'd also like to give another warm thank you to the higher tier community members such as J. Jackson Hall, Alien Ace Cat, Goth Barbie 3000, Alice Beth, and Wolves Hunting Packs. You have my expressive gratitude. Be well, stay safe, and good night.